So I'm going to go backwards, sort of, because this morning I, I, I was unsure what to, to share, if, or if anything, because, you know, I don't really have to share anything. We can just see what God does, you know, and that's kind of where I was at. Let, let, I'll just ready to see what God does. Um, but a scripture came to mind that Henry used to say a lot. So if any of you are in here that you heard Henry a lot, you're going to recognize this particular scripture because he loved to quote it. So it's in Psalm 68. And it's in verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Selah, Selah. So Henry loved to quote that scripture because he wanted us to understand that every day, every single day, God the Father, through the Lord Jesus Christ and his spirit, wants to daily load you with benefits. So, and that load doesn't mean just a little bit. It means like to be overflowing. How many of you ever got a loaded baked potato? All right, that, that thing is full of stuff. That's loaded, okay? Well, that's, so God doesn't want to just give you daily a little portion of something. He wants to pour it over you. And those benefits are for you in many ways. Benefits of his spirit, benefits being able to speak with him, but benefits in the natural too. He wants to load you with benefits. We know that our father is the one who gives us every good and perfect gift. He's the gift giver. Jesus is not the gift giver. Now he gave, a gift, he gave the one biggest gift was his life. But after that, he said, pray to the father and ask him. He's the gift giver. So every one of these, these gifts, even in scripture that are given to us, the fruit of the spirit, etc., those really come from the father because of the Lord Jesus Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit. Does everybody understand that? Praise the Lord. So now going backwards, I want to start at the top because the daily loading us with benefits was how this got started. But just to show where we are and who God is, is important for us every day. We know that Israel's at war, and so that's been one of our hearts and everything to pray for, the, for, for, for Israel, for the troops, etc., to pray for, the, for the, um, the country of Israel. And why? Because we know who they represent in Scripture, who they are in Scripture, and we're watching their timeline with great interest. There are sisters and brothers, some of them. They all still, I mean, the ones that, that, that pray to God, that's our God, so whether, where they're at with him, that's, that's God's business. But I want to read in Psalm 68. This is for, our, for us too. And this has got to be your declaration. Let God arise. Okay? Let God arise. Why does it say let God arise? Because we can stop him from rising. <laughs> so he's saying basically allow God to arise. Now, he can do anything he wants to, but he's working with us. And so we can stop God's forward motion if we want to because he wants to work in tandem with his bride, okay? So in the morning, when you get up, you should say, let God arise. That should be the first statement. A lot of times it's like, God, can you scatter my enemies? No, that you're going about this wrong. First, God's got to arise or there's no enemies going to be scattered. Because you're not going to be able to do it, not without him. So let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Amen. Can you say amen with me? Let God arise. Amen. And let his enemies be scattered. Amen. And amen just simply means so be it. 